What's up guys? John Ross here for Ross Racing with another video. You know, if you're one of the handful of people that have been following the channel for a while, you may have noticed that we haven't been uploading much lately. You know, you might assume that that's because uh, we haven't been racing, but actually it's the opposite. I've been racing a lot and, uh, you know, it's just a normal guy with, you know, a handful of volunteers that help me out. It can be pretty time consuming to try to do the racing thing, keep the car on the track, and, uh, you know, edit videos, put videos together, all that stuff. So I do have a bunch of footage from the last few races, and I, over time I'm going to work on putting together like a compilation video, uh, showing you some of the highlights of the season so far. Right now, I'm not going to have time to do that because over the next week, we're going on the USRA Summer Shootout Tour, uh, which is a, it's five days of racing in a row, Monday through Friday. Uh, Monday, which is tomorrow, will be at Fairmont Raceway, which is kind of our home track. You've probably seen that one in a few of the videos. Then we're going to Rock Rapids, uh, Webster City, Mason City, and Fort Dodge, Iowa. So pretty excited about that. I'm gonna, actually going to try to put together like a, uh, a more long-form video about the tour, about our experiences, quote-unquote, you know, on the road doing that. So I'm excited for both the tour and to kind of show you guys uh, how that's going to play out. That's, uh, for a small team such as this, that's a big undertaking, but I think we've made some real gains on the car these last few weeks. We've got the setup pretty well dialed in, and I think we may actually be able to give some of those big boys a run for their money. So, uh, you know, being that I haven't uploaded a video in a while, I figured I'd do one here real quick, just, you know, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a talky one, kind of filling you in on what's going on, and uh, maybe answering a couple questions that... Uh, you know, a couple of viewers have asked in the comments over the past few videos. So we've been racing one, sometimes two nights a week uh, for the past month or so. Uh, we have had some eventful uh, evenings over that time. Actually knocked the whole right front corner of the car off at I-90 in a B-Main, which uh, is a thing that happens sometimes. And then on the way back from the racetrack that night, we hit a deer with our race trailer. I uh, managed to avoid it with the truck, but uh, she jumped behind me and clobbered the front of the toolbox. So I'll show you some pictures here real quick of, uh, of what that looks like. Uh, maybe skip ahead if you don't, you know, if you're squeamish about deer hitting vehicles. So yeah, obviously that, uh, that was a challenge that cropped up. And then uh, this past weekend, uh, or earlier this weekend, actually Friday night at Fairmont, I managed to uh, I managed to drive into turn one way too hard like a like a dumbass rookie and knock the nose of the car off on on one of my competitors. So I'm working on fixing that right now. But uh, other than that, you know, we had uh, we had a good top five run at Fairmont. We're sitting in the top 50 in national points, which is kind of my goal for the season. So pretty proud of that. Hopefully, these next five races over the course of five days will go relatively smoothly, and we can build on that ranking a little bit. But since, like I said, I uh, don't have a whole lot of actual content to share for you just yet, I figured I'd go back and address uh, a couple questions that uh, some viewers have asked in previous videos. And the first, one was, uh, the first one was, how did I get into racing? And a little bit of like my background in the racing world. So I got started about, let's see, seven years ago now, racing go-karts down in Arkansas. Yeah, if you go back in the channel, there's a video called Harbor Freight Horsepower where I talk about how I got started racing carts and like kind of my recommendations to people if they wanted to get started in racing them as well. Uh, that was kind of going back before that. I mean, I've been a fan of racing ever since I was a little kid and I wanted to get involved in racing in any way that I could. But I grew up in a family that was not part of the racing world. You know, most of the guys that I race against are second or third generation racers or, you know, their uncle raced or somebody. Uh, I didn't really have any kind of pathway into the sport as a kid like that. So I figured that the, the best way to get involved was I wanted to get a degree in engineering and uh, find a way to work in the motorsports world as an engineer, like say, you know, for a race team or, or something of that nature. Uh, so that's, that's what I did. And uh, I worked as a mechanical engineer doing some other stuff for a while. But now after, you know, I've been involved in racing, I raced carts, and then I moved up and raced uh, what they call E-Mods, Econo-Mods down south. It's kind of like a B-Mod, but worse, more or less. Uh, now up into the USRA stuff. So between kind of what I've learned doing that and then what I learned on the engineering side, 
Uh, now I actually currently do work uh, as a mechanical engineer for a company that is a manufacturer in the in the motorsports you know performance world. Uh, I won't really share the specifics of my job on this channel because I don't want to get you know I don't I don't want to cross any lines as far as uh, you know sharing information like that. But I think if uh, well if you know me you already know or if you pay really close attention you might be able to figure it out. But yeah, so that's, you know, I don't, I don't want to try to like portray myself as some kind of authority on racing. At the end of the day, I'm just a regular guy who is doing something that he loves to do. Uh, and that's kind of the second thing that I wanted to, the, kind of the second thing that I wanted to talk about is a little bit of like my philosophy towards racing and how that pertains to this channel and how that pertains to like my background in the sport. So what I'm going to probably call this video is the ethos of the independent racer. And essentially that's my whole philosophy around racing around how I approach the sport kind of centers on that idea of like being, being an independent racer. Yes, I do. Like I said, work for a company in the racing world. I do receive some technical support from them. Uh, they certainly have, I have like my, racing career, if you want to call it that, has benefited from them and I'm grateful to them for that. But at the end of the day, I still consider myself an independent racer in the sense that um, I don't have big corporate sponsors. I don't have uh, a team owner. I am the team owner, you know. I don't have people uh, telling me how to operate my racing program or dictating it. You know, I race on my own terms and I race primarily on my own budget. I do have some sponsors and I'm very grateful to those guys, you know, for, and, and gals for helping me out and, uh, making it more possible for me to do what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, uh, this team would not, or this, you know, racing operation would not survive without me putting a lot of my own time, uh, money for sure and, and effort into it. So in a way I compare it, obviously, different scales completely but you know when you think of independent racers you know if you're like a nascar fan you probably think back like to like the 70s through the 90s before the big corporate money kind of turned the sport into uh the behemoth that it is today you know you probably think of guys like uh buddy harrington cecil gordon jd mcduffie those are kind of the guys that i look up to and that i kind of try to pattern how i run my racing operation uh, off of in a couple of ways. One, those guys, they rely, they were self-reliant and they relied on their skills. And if, you know, if they wanted to, if they needed to do something, they learned how to do it. That's why, you know, when I first started this channel, most of the stuff, most of the stuff that I was posting revolved around building engines. Uh, when I, back when I was racing carts, I had to learn how to put my own engines together because that was the only way that I could afford to do it. And it continues to be the only way that I can afford to compete at this level. Uh, now, granted, I'm not a professional engine builder by any means. I don't make any money off of it. But if I was going to buy an engine with the same kind of uh, prep work put into it, the same kind of parts put into it, I'd be looking at almost twice the money that I have invested in the engine that I built myself. Uh, so learning how to learning how to do things learning how to be self-sufficient as a racer you know things like you know you can buy a tire that's already uh, already grooved and siped and prepped and whatever what have you you can buy one that's already good to go but it costs more or you can learn how to do it yourself learn how to groove and sipe and grind and do all that good stuff we should probably do a video specifically about that at some point in the future uh, setting up the car you know figuring out setup help and stuff like that if you can learn how to do those things, you're going to be for sure money ahead compared to the guys who are out there uh, just paying for everything or having everything handed to them even. Because whether you just buy it or it's handed to you or whatever, you don't learn the theory behind it and you don't learn, you don't learn to appreciate it. So that's, uh, that's a big part of why I wanted to do this channel is to kind of share some of the knowledge that I've gained over the years and show that it is accessible for someone who's just a regular guy like myself to learn how to do those things. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to be an engine builder to spend all oh, building engines for 30 years or whatever to put together a dirt track engine. You know, 
put together a go-kart engine, learn the basics, get drunk with your buddies at 3 a.m. and throw a, you know, throw an old truck motor together, you know, in your garage. And then as, you know, as you move up, you, you know, you take the time to learn the minutia of it, learn the little detail work and, and get better. And yeah, you're gonna break some stuff and you're gonna spend a lot of money in the process, but at the end of the day, you'll have a skill that not very many people have. So that's a big part of why I wanted to do this channel is to kind of share some of that information with, uh, with people and hopefully, uh, you know, help, hopefully help more people get involved in the sport in more different ways. Obviously, another reason that I want to do it is somewhat selfish. You know, like I said, uh, I do have some sponsors and I feel like providing this exposure to them is, is beneficial and hopefully will help me find more sponsors in the future. But um, the other thing, like the kind of the last reason behind it is just to show what it's like operating as just a regular guy in the dirt track world to, to show content that's relatable to people. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers doing dirt track content. There's a lot of really good YouTubers doing dirt track content who are way better produced and honestly probably way more photogenic and uh, and better at this shit than I am. Uh, but a lot of them, you know, the channels go one of two ways. They either take off and they move up through the ranks and, and they're racing world outlaws and stuff like uh, Hunt the Front is, for example. And more power to those guys. You know, that's awesome that they're doing that. Or the channel dies out because, as I mentioned earlier, it's hard to do this as just a regular guy. But I think it's important to show people that, you know, because, yeah, the sport's expensive. It's extremely challenging. But I think it's important to show people, A, how much fun it is, all the cool stuff that we get to do, and B, that it is doable for just a regular guy. You know, if you race within your means, if you learn to do everything yourself as much as possible, you, like, you can do this. You can get into a race car. You can help out on a race car. Even just, you know, going to more racetracks and being a fan and supporting uh, supporting your local racers is is something that everyone can do, and that's what helps keep this sport alive. So that's a big part of what I want to share with you guys, and uh, I, hope that, I hope that comes across, and uh, I hope that if somebody, if one person gets into racing because they saw one of my videos, then I'll consider that a huge success. So uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sign off here real quick. Before I do, I want to show you guys a couple things, uh, there's a couple things that we're working on. Like I mentioned, I'm doing some body work on the car, so I'll show you where we're at with that. And we have a really exciting uh, engine project coming up that I'll be showing you every step of as well. So stay tuned to the channel, check out those things, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. So as you can see, the front of the car got tore up a little bit like I was talking about at Fairmont. That uh, The whole nose valence was actually pushed in quite a bit, like all the way up into the frame. And I've already kind of taken it apart and beaten it back out. So that's what I'm working on today, getting that fixed up, getting ready for the tour. And I'll show you, uh, show you something else that we've got coming down the pipeline. So right here we've got what's hopefully going to be the uh, the new kind of secondary backup, whatever you want to call it, motor eventually uh, for the B mod. This is a uh, this is a motor out of a, a '98 Chevy pickup truck. It's the uh, somewhat desirable Vortec model. So we're going to tear this down. I'll show that on the channel. Uh, the guy that we bought it from uh, told us it had a rod knock, so obviously we're not going to use much of anything out of the bottom end. But that's okay. Basically, just as long as the block's good. You know, we can't run these heads in our class, so we'll probably sell them. But I'll do a full video on the teardown of this motor. We can kind of analyze, you know, what happened to it as far as uh, what's going on with the rod knock and, and why it was up for sale for a couple hundred bucks in the first place. But yeah, that'll be a, there'll be another, uh, another motor to build here pretty soon. So stick around. We're going to have a good video from the tour coming up. And... Um, you know, some more engine building content because I know you guys tend to like that kind of stuff. But uh, for those of you who have stuck with the channel, thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, random rambling from me. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.